Didn't you used to be in a three-way relationship? What was that like? <sighs> I don't know how much I can necessarily say without making people angry. <laughs> Hello universe, my name's Kati and this is Harvey and welcome to our adventure. I asked on my Instagram and Snapchat for you guys to send me in questions you've always wanted to ask me or you want me to talk about on camera and y'all sent in some really awesome ones. Just like my assumptions video, once again you all had burning hot questions about my sex life. But we're not going to be talking about that today. By the way, sorry if you hear that background noise, they decided to start mowing the grass literally right as I sat down to start filming. I doubt it'll be there for the entire video, I'm hoping that they're going to be done soon, but just bear with me while we wait. <laughs> Obviously, we all know how Q&As work, so let's jump right into it. Question number one, what's your backstory? What I mean is, how were you growing up? So, I had a really, really good childhood. I struggled a lot in my preteen, teenage, adult current life, but uh, my childhood was cool. I have like a lot of cousins and shit like that, but I don't necessarily consider them family considering I've only seen them probably three times in my entire life. I'm completely fine with that though. So the only people I really consider family are like my mom, my dad, my sister, my nieces, my grandma, my grandpa. That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, so growing up, it was kind of exclusive, but it was nice. My parents are still together. Next year will actually be their 25th wedding anniversary, so congratulations to that mom and dad. I didn't have very many friends growing up just because I never got along with the kids my age, so I spent a lot of my childhood hanging out with adults. That caused me to grow up really fast and mature really quickly, and I mean, I have this issue in my adulthood, but even as a kid, I didn't process emotions the way normal people would, and I think that's because I wasn't able to be around other children, therefore I wasn't able to see how other children were processing their emotions and, you know, kind of going through stuff. I was just around adults, so I sort of processed my emotions like adults would at the age of seven or eight. I, of course, have dealt with a lot of depression and anxiety pretty much my entire life, but I feel like nowadays that's a really typical thing to hear. I actually started showing signs of anxiety at a really early age, but of course being so young, it's kind of hard for our parents to be able to tell what that is, so it got just brushed off as, oh, she's shy, but in reality, I was having panic attacks at <laughs> the age of three. If you could relive one moment, what would it be? Probably free diving in the Bahamas. It was so pretty and so unique, and there was nobody telling me where I could or couldn't go. I was like, I don't think I've ever felt more free in my entire life. What's your favorite song today? Um, Falling in Love by Dennis Cruzen. I think I said his last name right. What are you doing? Your heart starts ringing. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> What's your opinion on getting meaningless tattoos? Should every single tattoo have absolutely no meaning behind it at all? No, it's good to have reason behind certain things, but sometimes it's also good to just say f it and live in the moment. What in life changed your mind to make you care so deeply for others? Interesting question, complicated answer. I've tried making videos talking about this topic and kind of going full in depth into just everything that occurred, but I'm not comfortable enough talking on camera about all of the things I went through in life to get me to that point. Uh, so pretty much what I'm gonna say is I just got tired of being a pathetic and miserable person. So I decided to take the responsibility and finally make the change with myself, for myself, by myself. Ranch or ketchup? Ranch. But not like Hidden Valley bottled ranch. I've yet to find a store brand ranch that tastes like the kind they have at restaurants. So if anybody knows of a <laughs> ranch that you can buy at like Walmart or Target, please let me know in the comments below. Number seven, what are some things you find yourself lost in deep ponder about? I think about a lot. I think about the ocean a lot in specific. I know. Shocker. I'm always thinking, what can I do to make today better? A lot of people will ask themselves, what else could go wrong today? But I think instead of thinking that way, you should turn it around and think, what can I do to make today better? I also think about food. A lot. Are you religious? Explain your views. Pretty much, the biggest thing I believe in is the universe. Hence, you know, the whole universe is on your side brand. There are a lot of really good points in some religions and there are a lot of really bad points in some religions. So I think instead of just following one, listening to this, 
going by this, following these rules, it's better to take a little out of everything and sort of just create your own belief system and practice what you want to practice. Question number nine, have you ever had a wardrobe malfunction and if so, what was it? So let me tell you a story. Back when I was in high school, I participated in our community theater. We were putting on a production of High School Musical and I got casted as the role of Gabriella. The day before opening night, we had this full run through. We did it as like a uh, kid show kind of thing. So all the kids could, you know, have some entertainment and we could see what it was like to perform with everything in front of a live audience. When the song started out, I started with my back against the wall. There was like a nail in the wall right under my head. So I would kind of like feel the nail on the back of my head to make sure I got my mark. Like I said, it was a full run through just without hair or makeup, so I had my hair up in like a messy bun and I, I put my head up against the wall and felt the nail and I was like, cool, hit my spot. As the song goes, I was supposed to walk forward. What I didn't know was that my hair got like tangled on the nail, so when I went to walk forward, the nail was just like, nope, and my hair got caught and my head got like pulled back. In the back of my head, I'm like, okay, show must go on. So I'm, I'm continuing my solo as I'm trying to detangle my hair from this f***ing nail on the wall. And these kids were just f***ing laughing their asses off at me. All of my cast members and the crew were laughing and it was just... It was so embarrassing. But yeah, not necessarily a wardrobe malfunction, but pretty much in the same category, so. What's the biggest dating disappointment you've experienced so far? Um, that's really hard to say, just because there's so fucking many. Uh, a couple years ago, I met this guy, and we hit it off so well. A couple days after our first date, he gave me a call. It was like, I got an internship to California. Oh my god, that's amazing. You're gonna be able to do what you love. Like, you're gonna have so much fun. I'm so proud of you. When do you leave? And he was like, two weeks. <laughs> so, either that or one time... Yeah, that was a bit of a uh, jab to the heart, but uh, it's cool. What's your biggest sexual fear? Here's the thing. I've had a lot of embarrassing moments. I've had a lot of awkward moments. I've had a lot of, oh sh**, I can't believe that just happened. I want to crawl under a rock and f***ing die moments. There's not just one most embarrassing moment that's happened to me during sex. There are many embarrassing moments that have happened to me during sex. So I'm not afraid of things going wrong in the bedroom because anything that could have gone wrong in the past has pretty much already happened. What's your best slash juicy memory from high school that nobody knows? I wouldn't say nobody knows this, but I almost f one of my teachers. <laughs> What's the best advice you've ever received and by who? Girls are mean and boys are dumb. I know it sounds silly, but that advice has really gotten me through some serious shit in life. Thank you, mom. I would say either that or my dad always told me growing up in order to be happy in life, you have to be able to laugh at yourself. Like, boo fucking who, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I'm not done making mistakes in my life either. The fact that I'm able to make jokes about them and just take a step back and really laugh at whatever situation I'm in has kept me sane more times than I can count. What do you believe true happiness is? I feel like everybody has their own definition of happiness. I think true happiness for me is the feeling I get when I'm swimming in the ocean, the feeling I get when I spend time with my friends, when I'm on stage performing, when my whole family's together laughing, the feeling I get when you guys interact with me. I think true happiness is finding things that make you happy and surrounding your life with all of them. Why would a woman continue going back to someone that hurts them? This is probably one of my favorite questions because it's so relatable. It's not just strictly a female thing. A lot of times people will go back to a thing that hurt them when they're experiencing a new pain. It's almost like a coping mechanism. This new pain is unfamiliar, you don't know how to cope with, you don't know what will result of it. You felt that pain for so long, it's easier to deal with than the uncertainty of the new one. It's a pattern. People can give you all the resources and love and support they can, but if you yourself don't want to break the pattern, you're not going to. You have to experience a whole bunch of new and unfamiliar territory with pain and hurt and heartbreak, but in the end, you'll finally be able to get out of that toxic cycle. So, I hope that answers your question. Are you single eating some Pringles? 
that was nasty. Those were gross. Didn't you used to be in a three-way relationship? What was that like? So, I don't know how much I can necessarily say without making people angry. That's really funny that I have people who watch my channel now that were like following me back during those times. I was in a three-way polyamorous relationship with a couple. I know that when a lot of people hear this, they're instantly going to assume that it was jealousy that ended the relationship or some other misconception a lot of people get when it comes to polyamory, but that wasn't the case. don't want to say too much because I wouldn't want to upset or disrespect either of my previous partners. It was good until it wasn't. That's pretty much all I can say. For the most part, it made me pretty happy. At the time, I thought the world of both partners, and I'll always have so much love for them. Also, whoever asked me that question, thank you so much for writing with me for so many years. That's f***ing dope. Finally, the very last question of this video. What makes your emotional d*** hard? Reassurance, <laughs> communication, <laughs> acceptance, the little dances John Bellion does while performing on stage. <laughs> Again, thank you guys so much if you participated in this. Let me know if you'd like to see a Q&A part two. I love it when you guys send me stuff or ask me stuff. I just love you little muffins so much. If you'd like to follow my journey, please click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to follow my other adventures, I'll put my social media links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Hug your mom, hug your pet. And until my next video, remember that the universe is on your side. Bye. Let him in